If we've made it this far, I doubt they're still after us. Let's catch our breath. Yeah, yes We had sprinted from the Seki show in such a frenzy that my heart felt ready to burst in my chest. Harada and I were bent over, our hands clutching our knees as we inhaled deep, long gulps of air. I just remember something weird that Shiranui mentioned earlier. Something along the lines of how Kodo's been using his furies to curry favor with the Choshu. Yeah, I remember. Was there anything either of us could do? While on one hand it was nice to finally have a lead as to where we could find my father, a daunting path had been laid out before us. Nagakora was eagerly awaiting our rendezvous, and time was ticking before Aizu became little more than a war zone. If Mai and Harada's journey were to take us elsewhere, someplace far away from the heart of the battle, then there was a chance that Harada and Nagakora would never see each other ever again. I couldn't bear to let it happen without consulting him. Um, Harada... Just as I was about to voice my concern... Harada... I'm like, what happened? I thought we were attacked for a second. Harada wrapped his arm around my shoulders and drew me into a tight embrace. Ugh! It was so sudden that it was difficult for me to make out Harada's face in the thick darkness. Or maybe not. He pressed my face against his chest purposefully, holding me tighter than he ever had before. As soon as we make it to Utsunomiya, let's update Shinpachi and return to Edo. Just the two of us. Then we're gonna confront Kodo ourselves. But what about Nagakora? He'll be fine. I'll brief him on the plan. He and I are fully prepared to do whatever it takes to stop Kodo from fulfilling his plans, even if we have to split up. I've got Shinpachi covered. You let me handle the details, alright? I nodded, but in my heart I couldn't answer him. Something in the way he spoke befuddled me. It was almost as if he had been working to convince himself more than he was trying to convince me. Is everything going to work out, Harada? He and Nagakora were thicker than blood, and their friendship stretched since their days in Shie Hall. I could see the lines of worry f forming on his face. Yeah, I'm wondering. Because, I mean, he tightly embraced her and put her face in his chest so she couldn't look at him to read his expression. The fact that he was like tightly embracing her also makes me think like he's going to say goodbye to her. <laughs> it's like, just in case I never see you again. Hopefully not. Let's see. Hopefully I just read that all wrong. Are we in full blue, man? Yeah, that's my boy. We're, we're, we're talking about marriage and where we're living and kids we're having and stuff. Better be in full bloom. Ah, good grief. Alright, final chapter. And still not a fury. Neither of us. So, hey. We, we did it. So far. <laughs> Harada and I traveled in great haste to Utsunomiya, re reuniting safely with Nagakora upon our arrival. Oh, Sano, Chizuru! Thank goodness that the two of you are safe. Yep. As you can see, it'll take more than a bunch of Imperial twerps to kill me. Wow, no kidding. But it's not like attempting to put a sword through your gut killed you either. I'm sure those Imperial bastards are gloating to high hell for capturing Edo. Let's smash the morale to pieces. I'd like to see the dumb look on their face when they get a piece of me. It's time they knew who they're up against. We're not the same men we were at Toba Fushimi. Nagakora beamed with confidence, which perhaps had been the influence of his new techniques. The Seikyo core had been broadening his horizons. Oh, really? Well, I look forward to that next time. Anyways, oh, I bet you two are exhausted from how far you've traveled. Your room's all ready for you. Nah, I couldn't sleep a wink. You don't have to worry about me. Actually, I gotta discuss something with you if you've got a moment. What? Discuss something? It can wait. She looks beat. I bet she could use a nap or something from the long journey, too. Wow, Shin being the observant one for a change. That's nice. You really have changed. 
Come on, Chizuru, let's go! I've got the prettiest room in the house all ready for you. Uh, okay. Thank you. After offering him my thanks, Nagakora became giddy with excitement. He had practically been pushing us through the front door. How thoughtful. Later that evening. Nagakora came bursting into our room, and in his hand was a decanter full of a clear liquid. Hey, 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 Sano! Check this out! I spared no expense and got you guys some fancy sake! Woo! Now I know what you're thinking. How nice can this guy get? But I didn't get this just for myself. Really? It's for the two of us to share. Together. Hey, Shinpachi. That's real kind of you and all, but before we crack into that, we need to talk. You dumbass! Why are you being such a stick in the mud? We gotta put this in here before we talk about anything out there. Nagakora was bouncing off the walls, more excited than I had ever seen him before. I interpreted it as his way of celebrating the fact that Harada and I had made safe passage en route to Utsunomiya. Watching Nagakora buzz with glee made it hard for Harada to turn him down a second time. Well, alright. I guess I could have just a little drink. With a little more sake in his belly, Nagakora began opening up, and the pace of his voice quickened from when he started a sentence to when it finally ended. Hey, do you remember when we used to party at Yoshiwara, like back when we were still training at Shie Hall? Huh? When are you talking about? Remember? The first time we went, somehow we were able to convince Kondo to tag along. Every time we set foot in one of those joints, all of the women would flog to either you or Hijikata, you know? I mean, and you know how shallow men can be. Thinking back on it now, Kondo seemed to have this latent desire to be liked. Even back then. I don't know what came over him, but at one point he fit his entire fist into his mouth just for attention. Dang! How? Huh? Huh? Small hands? Big mouth? Kondo! I've got questions about your unhinged jaw. Oh yeah, I remember that now. We were all busting up laughing. For more than a few reasons, I think. Yeah, those girls couldn't get enough of him. And by that, I mean like they were cackling in his face. What a dope. But to Kondo, all that mattered to him was that he made women laugh, getting them all excited and whatnot, and he turned red as a tomato. Um, no, I'm pretty sure he knew that they were all laughing at him. But Kondo was the type of man who didn't let others ridicule him. Nor was he ever faced by the opinions of others, especially by women like that. That's just the kind of guy he was. Yeah. Oh, oh, and do you remember that one time? You know, when Soji found Hijikata's secret notebook full of haiku? I saw the CG of that. They were so terrible! We laughed our asses off, at least until Hijikata found out we took it. Aw, Toshi! I never did hear any of his terrible poetry. I'm still sad about that. Oh, yeah. That was hilarious. I don't think I've ever seen the veins pop out of Hijikata's face more than they did that day. Harada and Nagakura eagerly traded stories of their youth, reminiscing in the past as they whittled away the liquor from the decanter one shot at a time. Most of the stories came from their earlier days at Shie Hall. It was Kondo this, or Hijikata that, or Okita this. Each story was recounted so vividly, revealing tidbits of information about people whom I had grown to admire deeply. It almost felt like I was there. Somehow, not only had they told each tale convincingly, but without a hint of negativity, too. They clinked their glasses every five minutes, toasting to the memories of what used to be, which seemed totally at odds to where they left off with Kondo. Well, absence makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> and some time away makes you think about the good times. Soon, Nagakora's speech became slurred, and he blinked one eye at a time as he looked back at Harada. 
So, what's gotten into you? The only time you drink this much is when you've got something to celebrate. As an outsider, their interaction was what I'd expect when two friends reconnect after a long period of absence, basking in each other's company, but... Harada knew Nagakora well enough to spot the difference. Um. Nagakora fell silent. He toyed clumsily with his cup in between his fingers, watching what remained of his sake slosh inside of the cup for a moment until... Yesterday, I dreamt about Kondo. He had his arms crossed, like this, wearing that stern face of his, completely silent. In the dream, I was telling him what was on my mind, just like I usually did. But, but it was weird. Kondo just sat quietly, and I couldn't even tell if he was listening to me or not. He didn't make a peep. At the end of it, he started bowing profusely, and all he said was, I'm sorry, and then he left. Hmm. And when I finally woke up, I... I got the feeling that I may never see Kondo ever again. Ain't life just the damnedest thing? One minute I'm leaving the Shinsengumi, the next I'm dreaming that I'm back. What gives? Nagakora looked just as ready to burst into tears as he was into laughter, and without another word he gulped down the remaining sake from his cup. I watched their entire conversation unfold from off to the side, silent and sober. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't drink sake. The more inebriated Nagakora became, the more I realized why he had greeted us so fervidly. For Nagakora, Harada was all that tethered him to the memories of their past. Everyone else had either split off in a different direction, or was no longer with us. Hey, Sano. At the end of the day, you're the only one who stuck by me since during our days back in Shie Hall, right? Yep. It's both my blessing and my curse, it seems. <laughs> right back at you. But you know, since we've come this far together, we, we might... As well. Nagakora's face was completely flushed with color, and he fell to the floor mid-sentence, snoring as he entered a deep, drunken stupor. Oh. Man, that guy's got no control when he drinks. He still drinks like a teenager. Hasn't he learned how to take it easy yet? Harada rolled his eyes from second-hand embarrassment as Nagakora's snoring filled the room. Even as Harada poked fun at Nagakora's boorish behavior, there was a very genuine feeling of love between them, one that could never be broken. Today, Nagakora did all of the talking, and Harada did all of the listening. The rhythm of their conversation suggested that they could just as easily have switched roles, a close rapport developed over years of sharing drinks and stories. Chizuru, I hate to bother you, but do you think you could help me carry this big lug back to his bedroom and help me tuck him in? I'm the Heisuke now. <laughs> as hilarious as it'd be to leave him in the hallway, he's probably gonna wake up with a nasty hangover and kick up a fuss if he sees we left him here. Oh, sure. Together, we hoisted the unconscious Nagakora on our shoulders to his room and tucked him in. Pretty tough girl. Man, I missed my chance to talk to him. That bastard cut me off every time I wanted to say something. Sorry for letting him get the better of me. I promise I'll talk to him tomorrow. Please, there's nothing to apologize for. While it was true that there were still pressing matters to which we'd need to attend, that sadly Nagakora had become too drunk to discuss, to some extent, I knew that Harada hadn't wanted to sink the mood of their conversation either. I, just as much as Harada, wanted to savor what time we may have had left with Nagakora. Or at least, this was the impression I gathered from the melancholic expression on Harada's face. Ugh. Damn you, Shinpachi. Here I am, taking shot after shot of expensive sake, but I couldn't even enjoy my buzz because drunk-ass Nagakora talked through the whole thing. Talked through the whole thing? 
Harada paused for a moment, curling his lips in hesitation before he expanded upon his point. He gazed up at the ceiling, inhaling a deep breath as he shut his eyes. He ran his thin, coarse fingers through his hair. Finally, he opened his eyes, speaking as though he were confessing something to me. You see, I had dreamt about Kondo last night, too. Unlike Shinpachi, I couldn't talk to him. But he just stood there, and he had the oddest look on his face. It was like he wanted to tell me something. Doesn't that freak you out? What the hell are the chances that the two of us would dream something so specific together? I wonder if it's an omen. Considering how eerie it felt in the dream, I just can't shake the feeling that something bad's happened. It was tough for me to offer any input, and instead I lowered my gaze towards the floor. Nagakora had his own reasons for leaving, but... Harada's only reason for abandoning his life with the Shinsengumi, including everyone he had cared about, was me. If Harada was still with the Shinsengumi, then perhaps none of the existential problems that he currently faced would have been a problem for him. <laughs> if I were an ordinary girl, I like, oh no, this is like a dangerous spiraling thought that's just going out of control. Then Harada would have had no reason to uproot his entire life, leaving behind his beloved group of friends in his position just to protect me. Now I had put Harada in the position of abandoning his best friend, all because of my selfish needs. How crushing was it for him to bid farewell to arguably the most important person in his life? Girl, he's told you it's you. You, It was always you. It'd be more crushing if you weren't here. Oh, boy. Doubly so for Nagakora, who had no idea that his best friend would soon embark on a life-or-death mission. He's gonna tell him? You should get some sleep soon. You're a tough lady, but we walked all the way here. I bet you're tired. I'm fine. I... Tomorrow we've got the long road back to Edo. If you don't rest now, you'll never make it. Harada's resolve was stronger than I anticipated. Come hell or high water, he was determined to lead the two of us back into Edo. Okay. You're right. I'll get some sleep. Harada nodded curtly towards me, and I quietly slinked towards the direction of my bedroom. It's nice to be the one being told to go to sleep for a change, because I've had to tell so many guys up to now, like, you should rest. And they're like, nah, I don't need rest. I'm big strong guy. Carefully navigating the dimly lit hallway, I passed by Nagakora's room. He had quite a bit to drink, and I wondered to myself whether or not the alcohol had left his system. Out of concern, I silently poked my head into his room when... Oh! Ah! My head bumped into Nagakora, who, to my surprise, had one of his feet out of the door. Whoa! Sorry, Chizuru! Oh, oh no! Please, don't apologize! It was rude of me to enter unannounced. Hey, any idea how the heck I got into my room? Did I get so drunk that I passed out again? Uh... Yes. You seem to be having so much fun drinking and reminiscing with Harada. I assume that you were just excited to see each other. Oh, Man, I'm so embarrassed. It only took that much sake for me to pass out. Don't be. If anything, all it shows is how much fun you and Harada had together. Well, sure. There's that too. I just got ahead of myself thinking about how much I'd enjoy fighting alongside him again. I got antsy. Antsy? Sano. That guy is the epitome of a warrior. He's a rare breed. I couldn't think of a single person who I would trust with protecting my life more than Harada. But now that we're about to fight for the first time apart from the Shinsengumi, I'm curious to see how we're gonna fare in battle together. Nagakora's eyes beamed with enthusiasm. Ever since he was a boy, Nagakora fostered ambitions to become a renowned warrior, leaving his domain to dedicate his life to tireless training. For Nagakora to admit, without hesitation, how much he relied upon Harada was telling. A stunning realization hit me. 
There was no way I could bear to take Harada away from his best friend on the battlefield. It was a feeling that arose from the very bottom of my soul. Whoa. You've no idea how badly my head's pounding right now, so I'm gonna get some water. Don't stay up too late, Chizuru. Nagakora poked me with his elbow in a joking manner, then stumbled his way into the hallway towards the kitchen. Aw, Shin. Thank you, Nagakora. Thank you for helping me realize. Because of you... I realize what needs to be done. You are such a dummy. I don't even have to say for this one. You go to your boy so he can talk you out of this nonsense. After Nagakora fumbled awkwardly into the darkness, I turned around to head back to Harada's room. You're so silly. Harada, I need to speak with you. May I enter? Hmm? What is it? Come in. <laughs> All I had to do was come back and he's like, thank you? Hey, didn't I just tell you to get some rest already? If you stay up, then you're just gonna faint on our way to Edo. There was something peculiar about Harada's demeanor, though it would have slipped unnoticed to an outsider. Perhaps it was because he and I were beginning to develop an intuitive sense of communication, but was he planning to leave tonight without telling her, maybe? Is that why he was so eager to get her to rest? That might play into my theory of why he was hugging her so tightly. I don't know. Something fishy's afoot with you two. I could tell the stress was beginning to get to him. Harada, I am going to leave for Edo tomorrow, alone. A stiff silence was hung between us. Without saying a word, Harada stared intently into my eyes. I'd expected him to react differently, even angrily, but he kept a cool head in spite of my impetuous approach. I think that your place is better suited serving alongside Kondo on the battlefield. So, that means I will head for Edo alone. Our separation is only temporary. You're not even gonna bother consulting me, are you? That's right. I'm telling you. Right now. Wow. I'm telling you, this is not up for debate. I straightened my back, letting no shred of doubt hinder the confident delivery of my position. Harada seemed to recognize this, as he offered no immediate objection. I'll be more than fine on my own. It's not as dangerous as what you'll have to go through. For now, this is goodbye, but it isn't forever. Stay strong. I'll see you again soon. Do you really believe that? The chances of the Aizu winning are slim to none. Who knows what'll become of Edo? Do you seriously mean to tell me that you think there's a chance we'll see each other once the world starts falling apart? My heart skipped in my chest. I knew that. I knew this path wasn't going to be simple. Death was a familiar friend, one that lurked one step behind us at every opportunity. It was likely this would be our last goodbye. Just like that, every fantasy of the future we'd conjured together suddenly dissolved into nothing. A dull ache settled in the pit of my stomach. I don't want to live with any regrets. If I kept my mouth shut, then you would have just accompanied me to Edo, Harada. But doing so would end up sacrificing your time with someone who needs you more than I do. Nagakora was Harada's most trusted ally on the battlefield. Before I arrived, they were by all accounts inseparable, dedicating every moment of their lives in the pursuit of becoming the strongest warriors they could be. What chance did either of them have of keeping their hearts from shattering if the other were to die? What chance did any of us have? Could I watch the man I love mourn the loss of his closest confidant, especially if it were because of my selfishness? I'm... so pathetic. It's impossible to shake the feeling that I'm nothing more than a burden on you. All I want is for you to live your life without any regrets, Harada. Because... I love you. I laid it all out there, knowing that we had reached the point where I had no other choice but to speak candidly about my insecurities. Harada sighed, blowing air into the bangs on his forehead. 
<sighs> it was unclear to me whether his sigh was out of frustration or, worse, complete and utter resignation. I felt defeated either way. Harada paused for a moment, searching diligently for the right words as he stroked his chin. You and I have had this conversation already. But all I ask out of life are three things. A beautiful lady, a beautiful home, and some peace and quiet. I silently nodded. My heart panged hearing him list off the things I felt were out of my reach. To be quite honest with you, I've had several chances to make this dream into a reality. There have been quite a few women in my time who I'd guessed to be my future wife. Back when I was with the Shinsengumi, I made more than enough money to support myself and a family. But even with all of my ducks lined up, I never did it. Do you know why that might be? Once more, I shook my head slowly. I just couldn't get myself to commit. I mean, you get it, don't you? Asking for a peaceful life as a warrior seems a little counterintuitive, wouldn't you say? It's a paradox. I don't know a single warrior who's out there toiling all day on the battlefield, only to become a pacifist by nightfall with a wife and a couple of kids at home. Harada's eyes thinned, parsing every facet of his fragile dream right in front of me. This certainly seemed to strike a nerve with him. He had, on multiple occasions it seemed, entertained the notion of pursuing this idle life, only to sweep it from under his own feet to avoid disappointment. He was edging closer to repeating the cycle with me. I can only make one dream come true at a time. For now, that means either fighting with Shimpachi, or... He didn't need to finish that sentence. Or spend the rest of my life with you. My heart sank 30 leagues inside of my chest. Dang, that's pretty deep. I was under the naive belief that I had given enough thought and consideration to my decision. But... Harada's heartfelt explanation for how he arrived at his own conclusion on the matter crushed me. My mind swirled with guilt. You've chosen me. Yes. You said that you wanted to spend your life with me. Yes. My attempts to stop myself from loving Harada were as futile as asking the ocean not to crash upon the shore. A sense of yearning overflowed from my heart. However, I knew that giving in to these feelings would only make our impending separation more painful. I want nothing more than to run away. Holding back my tears was proving to be a challenge. Just looking at him felt like a personal torment. If he was going to lay down the decisive blow, then all I could ask for was for him to be quick about it. Tear it off like a band-aid, please. I had never felt more disposable than in this moment. Oh, this music isn't helping either. Just as my head was getting the better of me. I've known the answer for some time now. To tell you the truth, it's a no-brainer. There's only one choice for me. <laughs> Harada suddenly grabbed a hold of my wrist, pulling me into his body. I was lifted off my feet, dang, landing safely in Harada's gentle, muscular arms and our eyes locked together. Whoa. Where, where are we? Ah. I'm just gonna pin you to the floor so you never leave. <laughs> That's how you do it. Thank you, Harada, for talking some sense into this girl. She's so crazy. Wants to just throw her life away so much of the time. Ugh. You think I'm an idiot, don't you? His face was only inches from mine. There was an enchanting glimmer in his eyes, but it glowed differently than any other time our lips or bodies had previously been pressed together. Even though I knew what I'd wanted all along, I had my doubts as well. Does that sound stupid? Harada had to contend with his own internal mutterings, plagued by the uncertainty that accompanies any huge change in life, but that it came on my behalf worried me. 
It was as if looking into his eyes was like peering into the mirror of his soul, left on display only for me. No other woman has ever stirred up so many feelings in me at once. It's like when I'm next to you, I'm experiencing all of life for the first time. I made my choice a long time ago. The one I chose is... You, Chizuru. Harada. You raised the stakes, kid. I've got so much more to lose without you by my side. I'm sure that as our lives progress, there may be others who will feebly attempt to take your place. But without hesitation, I will always choose you. So this is what it means to fall in love. Picking your Pokemon? <laughs> Finally deciding on your Pokemon? <laughs> Sorry, every time I hear, I choose you. All I think of is Pikachu. Oh, Pika Pika. For the first time, I felt the inexhaustible flame of Harada's love consume me entirely, finding myself hopelessly smitten by his portrait of perfection. Dang. We found ourselves inexplicably drawn to one another. Even if loving him meant risking our lives, throwing any sense of caution to the wind, I did so anyway. You're gonna do that whether you're in love with them or not. <laughs> you crazy girl. I adored every one of his qualities, and I accepted every one of his flaws. There was no turning back. No matter how sinful it may have been. You... My voice cracked before I could string together a sentence. Will always choose me? Me? Yeah. For a split second, darkness flashed before my eyes. The implications of Harada's choice began to sink in. I imagined Harada twirling his spear above his head, grinning with Nagakura as the two of them fought together heroically in the Aizu battlegrounds. I've made myself absolutely certain, so... Harada peered into the depths of my soul. Chizuru. Now it's your turn. You choose. Don't let go of me. Tonight, our future together unfurled like a blossom. Harada gingerly undid the bun, holding up my hair. And all of the fine strands floated down to my shoulders. Oh my god, it's actually happening! Oh my god! Oh my god, it's actually happening! Um? He stroked the small of my back gently, running his thin fingertips along the string tied around my waist before plucking it loose with the flick of his finger. With every touch of his supple lips against my skin, my entire body shivered, feeling the tickle of his kiss against my cheeks, my neck, and behind my ear. Dude, I can't believe. <laughs> oh my god. Um. <clears throat> okay, we can we can get through this together, everyone. Ah. Are you scared, Chizuru? One solitary tear streamed down my cheek. I would be lying if I'd said that I wasn't afraid. Harada was patient, giving me time to answer as he grazed my cheeks gently with his delicate hands. There was no time for shyness, and soon I no longer felt any hint of nervousness in his presence. I wanted his mouth to travel over every surface of my tender flesh, his fingers closely in tow. Dang! Go get him, Chizuru! I wanted to give him everything, and more importantly, I wanted him to take it from me. Dang! Alright! Go Chizuru! I'm not letting you get away this time. Are you sure this is what you want? My hand treble trembled beside my face, as if searching for something to hold. Without missing a beat, Harada clasped my hand, steadying its incessant shaking. He interlocked his fingers with mine, gripping them like he was holding on for dear life. His hand was mine to hold. Forever. 
Every callus, every scar, every accent on his hand's rough exterior was mine, and I love them. Harada. The rhythm of our breasts became something of a staccato, intensifying as we gave more and more of ourselves to one another in ecstasy. Dang. Man, all we see is the hands. <laughs> is hand holding the kink? Because, I mean, like, he's holding their hand when they're, you know, ha breathing in staccato and such. Right, guys? What do you think? Hand holding? For the, the kink? Maybe? With an honorable mention for head pats? He nibbled on my lips, pressing me tighter against him. As our lips parted, Harada gazed at me coolly, muttering softly into my ear. Oh, dang! I just got chills! <laughs> yes! Yes! First name only! Oh, yes! Oh, I love everything about this! It's Sanosuke. Sano... Okay. I uttered his name for the first time. He pinned me down tightly underneath his thick arms, and it felt as though we were being engulfed with heat, trickling through every inch of my body. I was a demon, and he a human. But these labels mattered little in the passionate throes of our intimate embrace. Mm -hmm. All I needed was to believe in him. As long as we were together, life would be worth living. I wanted us to make our dream a reality. I wanted to carve a life for ourselves together. I submitted myself completely to his will. On our first night spent together in the same bed, I made this promise to myself. <laughs> 